create this pixel screen effect in After Effects. Alright, let's get it right into it. New composition, 1920 by 1080. And just with a 30 frames a second, does, it's not important necessarily. Now I want to make that pixel effect, that's the first thing I want to do. So I'm going to go make a, let's go for a 100 by 100 composition. Comp2, you can rename that. Pixel, comp. It's a very small little screen. I'm going to go right over to the shape tool. It's already set to red. It saved me a little bit of time. Now with the arrow selected, I can alt drag that to just multiply that shape. So we've got rectangle one, rectangle two, rectangle three. One can stay red. Delete the stroke. It's not necessary, the stroke's already set to one, but Rectangle 3 adds blue. Okay, save this project. Pixel screen. Okay, so I'm going to drag that little pixel comp onto here. Here we go. And I'm going to use an effect called CC Reptile. It's a little pun there by the developers, but it does this really nice expansion out. Now we want these set to something ridiculous like 8000. And about 5000 at the top and the bottom. So it's huge at the moment, so we're just going to go in to the transform of this and shrink it down. There we go, we've got the beginnings of our screen. So I'm actually going to take it down to 10% of its original size. No, that's way too, it's too small. Let's go for 20%. We can still see them. Great. We've got our basic background screen. Now we want to create the numbers. Go to the text tool, drag out the numbers. I've got this font called Ode to Idle Gaming, which is quite a nice pixel font. Uh, not pixel font, blocky font, sort of like a It suits what I'm trying to do here because it's really rectilinear, so it sort of fits to the grid nicely. Now I want this to count up source text, so hover over the source text, alt click it. It'll give you the. Oh, hold on, before we do that, let's get the slider out. Effects and presets, I think it's here. Slider control, double click on that to apply to the selected layer or just drag it on, whatever you prefer. So the slider won't do anything yet, but here we go, slider control. So if I alt click on this, I get the little pick wick up, I can drag that down to the slider. And now, the slider can control what text is in there. Set that back to zero. And I'm just going to make this effect last five seconds. Take it up to five. So we've got 
a bit of a decimal point thing going on here. It's a bit weird. Um, it's not really what we want, so you have to do math dot round and put those into brackets as far as I remember. If we don't get an error then we've done it right. That's great. So check we're happy with the where that appears. Sort of centralize it a bit more. Cool. I'm going to set that to an overlay so that it's sort of coming through the text. But um, I really want it showing up a bit more. So weirdly, I would probably duplicate that later on um, on top of itself and then set it to an overlay. Okay, time to make this a bit more 3D in a second. So I'm going to wrap these in a comp themselves and I'm going to call it a uh, screen comp. Make sure to move all attributes into the new composition. You don't need to open it right now, but there we go. So that's screen comp. I'm going to make that 3D, hitting the little square box here. Add a new camera, standard camera, and a new light. Make it white for now. Uh, spotlight, OK. Probably want it to, to cast shadows. Right. Want to make the cone angle a bit wider, I can instantly see that's a little bit narrow there. So I've got this other viewer here that will help me when I'm compositing stuff in 3D. So the camera, here we go. I'm going to do some rotation on the camera. Move the light out a bit, or in a bit. <laughs> so this view currently is set to the active camera. you might have more luck editing things with the left view or right view. That's the camera there. Get in nice and close. It gets a bit tangly. You might be better selecting things in your Quite a nice reveal effect there. So I'm going to reduce the uh, cone angle and the feather, increase the feather, get that softer effect. So right now we've got no movement on the camera, but we can just see that counting up there, which is pretty nice. Let's just really let that render through. Alright, just goes counts up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So what I did previously, which I think added to the effect, was to copy that comp and to offset it in the z-axis, just slightly. Um, yeah. 
you can experiment with the different blend modes, find the one that works best for you, what you know, what effect you're trying to achieve. I really want to sort of get the feeling of the the glass causing some distortion there. Um, yeah, I mean you're gonna have better luck. You're gonna have more time to, to play around with those options. Reduce the opacity of the background layer maybe. Instantly get a little bit of depth there. It's probably too much now. Um, Okay, so with the camera, I'm going to get the depth, of, put the depth of field on, and now this starts to chug on my machine because it uh, has to calculate all the blur. Crank the blur level up, just so that I can work out the focal distance. Now this is a bit of trial and error. There we go, there's the focal. That's the point of focus there. I'm gonna have to bring the, uh, the blur level down because it's just too crazy. So there we go, that's that's the focal point. And it's still a bit too much, you know, it's still a bit too crazy. The aperture obviously affects how much the tilt shift goes mad. Again, you want to just experiment that with that to, to see what from you know what produces the effect you you want. So in the previous one, I just had my camera position and the focal distance change as I moved around. I think I probably had point of interest as well. So using this tool, you can roll round. And if necessary, change the focal distance. That seems okay there. I'm gonna keyframe it anyway. And come around further there. Now I kind of want it bouncing back to where it originally was so that it loops a bit more nicely. So I'm just gonna copy and paste the end pixels there. And that's the basic effect. So the other bits were achieved using Saber, a wonderful free plugin from a video copilot which I'll post a link to. Um, I'm not going to delve into that so much here just because it's going to slow us down. What I can do is in the screen comp, set that to overlay. I'm going to copy and paste that a few times and one set to normal and just fade it out a bit. Now if you're working with a, a font that's not pixely, you could apply a mosaic shade um, effect to it. Mosaic. I mean this one's... Yeah, 
so obviously I've just gone for 1920 by 1080 that's uh, stupid because that's what it's like anyway this fonts so pixely that I mean so blocky it's not going to show up but if say for example I went for any other font now we can't really see that why is that okay there it's a fairly good example you'd probably want those pixels to to match this sort of pixel grid here otherwise it's going to destroy the uh, illusion um, but as long as you apply a, a mosaic effect on that that's going to work okay Gonna set that back to overlay again. I just copied and <laughs> copied the layer. Um, I could sneakily offset that. See if that improves the effect. Well, anyway, you get the idea. Happy rendering, guys. Have a good one.